Welcome to part three of this tutorial series where we're creating this sci-fi airlock or sci-fi corridor artwork in Blender. So in parts one and two, we had done all of the 3D modeling of the sci-fi airlock. And so in this part, we're gonna start with the texture painting. So we're going to be texture painting bump maps on all of the sci-fi metal to get some cool sci-fi details. Now, if you'd like to learn the basics of texture painting in Blender, then you can definitely check out my texture painting for beginners tutorial, link is in the description, and you can also check out my texture painting tutorial playlist to watch more of my texture painting tutorials. And I actually have a video specifically on how to texture paint bump maps, so if you'd like to check out that video, link's in the description. So we're going to start by texture painting the details on the floor. Now, I actually want to apply the mirror modifier because I want the sci-fi details to be a bit different on each side. So right over here on the mirror modifier on the floor, I can just click here and then just apply that. So now it's actual geometry. So I now want to UV unwrap the floor because we need to UV unwrap it before we actually do the texture painting. So let's click right over here on the UV editing tab and then I can select everything and I'll just zoom into it. And I'm just going to do the smart UV project because that works fine for the texture painting. So if I hit the U button with the mesh selected, I can just do the smart UV project and then click on OK. And that will be a fine UV unwrap for texture painting. So I can now hop over to the shading workspace and we're going to set up the material. So let's click on the new button here. And then just for now, I'm going to take the base color and I'm going to make it kind of like a gray color. I'm also going to make it a metallic material and I maybe we'll turn the roughness down just to make it a bit more shiny. And then let's add an image that we can texture paint on. So I'm going to add an image texture and then I can click on new to create a new image. So I'll just make this floor bump and then I'm going to go with a 4K texture. So I'm going to go with 4096 by 4096. Now here on the color, we want to set this to a mid gray color. And that way when we paint lighter or darker, it'll look like the bump map is going up and down. So here on the RGB on the red, green and blue, I want all of these to be set to 0.5. So it's a mid gray color. And then also to make it very high quality because this is a bump map, I do want to use the 32 bit float and then click on OK. So now we can take the color, we can put that into the normal, and then of course to convert it to normal data, we need to add a bump node. So we'll put a bump node here and we want the color to be going into the height value. And then because this isn't contributing to the base color here on the color space, this should be set to a non-color. And then one other thing that I found that makes the bump map a bit higher quality, I'm gonna take the linear here and I'm just gonna change that to cubic. I find that makes it a bit higher quality. All right, so we can now go over to the texture painting workspace and I'm gonna go into the material preview and that way when I actually paint this you'll be able to see it taking effect in real time so it actually looks bumpy. Alright so I brought Blender over to my drawing tablet because I do prefer to use a drawing tablet when doing texture painting and I do usually always recommend using a drawing tablet for texture painting because of its many benefits of having nice smooth strokes, better posture, and also the pen pressure but for this kind of texture painting it's so rigid and mechanical that you don't really need a drawing tablet so you can just use a mouse if you want to and do the texture painting painting, I'm going to be using my drawing tablet. And if you're interested in purchasing a drawing tablet, I will have some Amazon affiliate links in the description to some tablets that I recommend. And if you purchase something through those links, then I'll earn a small commission, but with no extra cost to you. Now, if I go to top view, you can see the tunnels actually in the way. So real quick, I'm just going to go back to the layout and I can just select this object here. And then I can just hide the object and I actually want to select this object and hide it as well. So then I can just select the floor object and I'll go back to texture painting. So the first thing that I want to do is create some rivets or bolts on the two sides. So to do this, I'm going to go here to the stroke settings and on the stroke method, I want to change this instead to line. And this way we can draw lines instead of it being freehand. And then I also want to turn the spacing up. So I'll turn it up all the way to 500. So this way I can now draw and you can see it's going to show a line. And then when I let go, it's going to have a spacing in between all those. So I'm just going to zoom way out and I'm actually going to draw right down here to see where it starts. So it starts about there. So right here, I can just make my brush a little bit smaller and then I'm just going to drag down. And then what you can do is hold down the alt key and that is going to constrict the lines by increments. So I'm just going to drag that there and then let go. And I actually want to redo that because one of those bolts was really close to another one. So I want there to be a bit more space 
So let's go like that. All right, that's pretty good. And then I want to do pretty much the same thing over here on this side. I'm just going to hold down the Alt key to constrain that and drop that there. And I'm just going to redo that because again, there was a bolt that was kind of on top of another one. That's looking pretty good. And I can just tap once to add another one there. All right, so I'm now just going to start making some cool panels and things. Um, so I think I want to add one right here. So I don't really want to use those bolts anymore. So what I'm going to do here is go to the stroke settings. And I actually want to keep this aligned, but here on the spacing, I just want to turn this to like nine and that way now if I draw it looks like one single line because there's basically a bunch of circles all together really close to each other and then also if I go right over here and click on this color I want to make this black and this way when I draw now it looks like it's going back in so I'm just going to make my brush a little bit bigger and then I can go along here and again hold down the alt key to constrain it and just drag it there I can also drag it over here and then drag it over here. And if you hold down the Alt key before you start to drag, it's not gonna work. So click and then you can drag. And then after you're dragging, you can hold down the Alt key and drag over. And then I'll make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm gonna do something right here. So I'll go like this. Then I'm gonna have it kind of go sideways. So that's pretty cool. And then maybe down like this. And then we can also go over and then we can also bring this down. All right, and then I can also make my brush a bit bigger and I'm actually gonna go back to white. So I'm going to paint with white and I'm just going to click there and just kind of tap there, kind of tap around these edges to kind of make some like rivets or holes where there might be a screw or a bolt. And I think I'll add another kind of mini panel here. So I'm just going to add something cool right there. And I'm just going to like go along here and make some little things going back and forth. That's pretty cool. And it's definitely recommended to look at reference images of other sci-fi artworks and things that inspire you, sci-fi artworks that you think are really cool, to kind of get ideas of how to make sci-fi designs. I definitely looked at a lot of reference images when I was first creating this. And I'm now using reference of the other version that I created of this artwork. Because whenever I'm making tutorials, I make the entire artwork at least a few times, if not more, to make sure I know how to create it and make sure I can consistently create the same artwork. So I'm just kind of making some cool little panels here or some metal plating, just filling that in there. And maybe I'll like have a line kind of coming down here. Actually for that one, I think I'm going to turn it back to white. So I'll make it white. There we go. Have that going there. And then I want to fill some of these in. So to fill these in, I'm going to bring this out and kind of zoom out here so I can kind of see it. You can see here's the texture that we're actually making. And I want to fill this in, um, but right now we have the line tool, so that's not what I want. So I'm going to go right over here to the stroke settings, and I'm going to just turn this back to dots. And then I just want to make the color fully black. So now I can just make this quite a bit bigger, and I can just go along here, and I can just fill this all in. And then also you can see, even though it looks black right over here, there are a few areas where it's a bit lighter. So I'm just going to go along here, on the actual 3D mesh and just kind of paint that in there. And you can also go into the camera view at any time to kind of see how it is looking. And then kind of right here, you can see in the actual 3D model, there's kind of a little gap there. So I want to make my brush really small. And I'm just going to add a few little dots. So one there, another one there, just kind of go back and forth. I think that is pretty cool. Just adding a few little dots there. And then I want to keep on painting lines. So if I go here to the stroke, stroke method, I'm going to change this back to line. And then I can drag down kind of make some cool, some more cool sci-fi details here and just go along there, make another thing right there. And we'll also do something right here, go down, go over, just like that, go along there. And then I could also change the color. So I'm gonna make it white and then I can just like zoom in here and I can just like tap there and there. And we'll do a few more on each corner. And I think I wanna keep on doing that. I wanna do that a few more places. So I will do that there and there. And then also we have a space right in here. So I wanna do something cool here. I'm just gonna draw some lines and then maybe just like add some dots on the end. For some reason, I just think that looks pretty cool. Maybe do that a few more times. So I'll add another one and another one and add a few more dots there. I also think adding some squares might be kind of cool. So I'm just gonna like draw some little squares or some rectangles, maybe make another smaller one right there. That's kind of cool. All right, I'll see how that's looking in the camera view. And I definitely don't want to add too many details because I don't want it to look too distracting. And I think it's nice to have some areas where there's like lots of detail, but then other places like right here where it's not very detailed. Something else that might be kind of cool is like adding a line sideways. That actually looks pretty cool. Maybe also do that right there. 
That's kind of cool. Although those lines aren't the same thickness. So I need to make that a bit thicker, something like that. And then if for some reason you want to erase something, you can hold down the S key and just grab the mid gray color that you're using. And then you can just paint along here and you can see it's going to erase. So that's actually kind of cool. I might even do that. I didn't do that on the other artwork, but I think that actually looks kind of cool, kind of erasing a few areas. Um, let's also see what I can do here. I might even like go in there, go in there. That is looking pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Kind of erase some things like there, go over there, and then go down like erase in there just to add a little bit more detail. All right, so that is going to be it for the texture painting of the floor. So then we need to save this image to our computer. So let's just click on image and save this image. And I'll just save this in my project files as floor bump and I'll save it as a PNG image click on save as. All right, so we can go back to the shading workspace. So now that the texture painting is done for the ground object, I'm just gonna go back here to the shading workspace. And I can just go into the camera view and I'm gonna unhide the other objects. And I'm just gonna go into rendered mode to see how this is looking. Now I don't want there to be any light here in the world. So if you click right over here to go to the world properties, let's just delete the world so it is black. And then I wanna add a light just so that we can kind of see what this is looking like. So I'm gonna go down here to light and for now I'll just add like a point light and I'll go into the camera view and I'm just gonna move the point light and that actually looks really cool so I'm gonna bring the point light here and then just kind of move it up and if you go here to the light settings I'm gonna turn the power up just so it's a bit brighter and that is really starting to look cool also to make the lighting look a bit nicer let's go here to the render properties and we'll make the color management look here uh, very high contrast and I'm also using the view transform of filmic so now it's pretty contrasty and then also clicking back on this light I'm gonna go to the light settings here and I want to make this just a very slight blue color um, because the final scene will be a little bit blue so I'm just gonna make it like a slight blue color maybe a little bit stronger than that so we haven't done the materials for these other objects here but I'm just kind of looking down here at the ground object and so I want to do some things in the shader editor to make it look nicer now if you want to you can actually invert the bump so if you kind of zoom in here and go to the bump you can invert that if you like it better I'm not quite sure which one I like better but I think I am actually going to invert it at least for now and then I find that just turning the strength down to maybe just like a 0.5 actually looks a little bit better so it's not quite as bumpy we could also make it a bit more shiny for now something like that now this base color here is just a single gray color and I actually want there to be a little bit of variation in the color so I want some of those metal plates to be different colors and also where there's some creases I want that to be a bit darker so what we can do is just take the color and we can put that into the color here the base color and I can see some of those panels are darker and it adds a lot more interest but then I also want to add a color ramp because I want to be able to have more control over the colors so I'm just going to add a color ramp and then I do have the node wrangler enabled so I'm just going to preview this color ramp using the node wrangler so what I'm going to do is now kind of drag some of the tabs around so I'm going to drag this kind of into the center here and this one I'm going to drag out a little bit and instead of it being fully black I think I'll just make it kind of like a gray color and then I'm also going to add another tab here and this tab I'll make it darker and so if I make that darker now you can see it's giving more contrast and it's showing the colors of some of the other sci-fi details and I'll make that a bit darker something like that so you can play around with the colors of the color ramp and the location of those tabs. I think something like that actually looks really cool. So if I now just preview the principal shader, that is adding much more interest. And you can see that some of those areas are a bit darker. Some of those plates are a bit darker, but then the other metal is kind of light. Now the metal is super shiny and it's very smooth. And so I want to add a noise texture to give it a little bit of bump and just make it a bit noisy and make it look a bit more realistic. So I'm going to add a noise texture and then I'll press Control T using the Node Wrangler. And we're going to use the object cord coordinates and let's also preview the noise texture and I think I will turn the detail up and I'll also turn the roughness up a bit more to like a 0.7 so there's even more detail and I think I'll just use a scale of like three and then I'm also going to duplicate this color ramp and I'm going to put this color ramp after the noise texture um, I can reset the color ramp with the backspace and then I can kind of drag these together just to make it a bit more contrasty and then instead of it being super white or super black I'm going to make it kind of like just like a gray color so it'll be kind of gray and then this one one will be kind of like a dark gray and I can kind of drag these together something like that's pretty good and I actually want to take this and I want to put it into the normal so what I'm gonna do is click on this bump let's duplicate this bump and I can just stick it right in here and I can turn the invert off and then I can take the color here let's just put that into the height so 
Now if I take a look at that bump, you can see it's very bumpy and I can look at the principled shader. Now of course that is way too bumpy, it looks like a super old metal, so I'm just going to turn the strength down to like a 0.03 or something very small. So now if I just zoom in there, you can see it just looks slightly bumpy and that makes the metal look a bit more realistic. It just has a little bit of surface bump. And then I also want there to be a little bit of variation in the roughness, so let's put this color into the roughness as well and that makes it look really cool. So you can see there's just a little bit of variation in the roughness and that looks really nice. Now I also want to put the texture painted map into the roughness as well and that way some of these metal plates will be a little bit more rough or more shiny. So to add this in we're just going to use a mix so let's just drop the mix here and we're working with color values so let's change it to color and I'm going to stick this here in between the color and the roughness. And then let's actually use the floor bump as the factor to control where it's A and B. So I'll just put that in there and I will preview that. So now you can see the metal plating, but you can also see the noise on top of it. And I'm actually going to take the color ramp and I'm going to put that into B and then I can play around with color A. So I can make it a bit darker. That's better. So now I can preview the material and you can see some of the metal plates are a bit more shiny or a bit more rough because there is a bit of variation in the roughness. So just by adding that little noise texture into the bump and also adding some random noise into the roughness, it really makes the metal look so much more interesting. And so we're going to be using a very similar node setup for the other metal material. I can also move this around, just kind of take a look at that, take a look at the reflections, and that looks really cool. All right, so this is going to wrap it up for part three of the tutorial series. So I hope you've been enjoying this, and thank you for watching. And when part four is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen, and I'll also have the link in the video description. And if you're enjoying this tutorial series and you'd like to help support this channel, I will have links in the description to my Gumroad and my Patreon and the YouTube memberships. Those are all great ways to help support this channel. And you can also purchase the finished tutorial files of this tutorial as well, so I'll have the links in the description to that as well. But thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next part.